to start things off, we're going to start off talking apologies because there's the whole J. Cole situation with Kendrick Lamar, Drake, and all of that stuff. And we're going to get to that in a second. But I got an apology of my own that I have to deliver in the stream. And I got to do it because I got to be real with myself. I got to be honest. I got to keep it thorough. Last stream, last episode, last talks, I said something that I feel I need to correct. And it's not necessarily changing my stance on it because I stand on what I said. But pretty much in the last one, I was talking about Sexy Red and Candace Owens. And I was talking about how both of them are, you know, Mainly, I was more so going in on Big Sexy. I ain't gonna lie. I was going in on Big Sexy. I wasn't being fair. I was like, you know, she's promoting poison to the youth, yada, yada. And I was kind of giving Candace a pass for all of the messed up stuff she said. Because she said a lot of anti-black rhetoric. So, I have to correct that and say it's not right where at the end of the day, they're two sides of the same coin. She's feeding poison in one direction while Candace is feeding poison in another. And, you know, they both have uh, the ability to, you know, change and, and fix those errors. But it was wrong of me to only hold Sexy Red accountable for what she's doing and not all of the anti-black rhetoric that throughout the years Candace Owens has spewed. I got to just keep it all the way real. It's very hypocritical and I'm not perfect by any means. But I just got to keep it real. I was wrong to Big Sexy, especially the fact that it kind of bothered me that I was a fan of Sexy Red before she blew up. Not that I'm trying to be, a you know, oh, I was there. But I was a fan of Sexy Red. I, I wanted to see her win. So it's so just wrong of me that now that Sexy won, that I'm looking at it and I'm saying these, oh, she's, you know, poison or whatever. Because I was rocking with it beforehand. I just didn't look at the grand scope of things or whatnot. And also, again, she has the opportunity to change things think about it like this right big sexy got all of those girls that you know they they already had a lot of them they had that oh man i want to be ratchet i want to be like that mentality now she got them in the palm of her hand the next move that big sexy makes and her team makes she could do something huge to do something positive in a positive way to bring a positive impact she right now has the ability to help and change a lot of things because of her influence reaching those girls so i say all that to say not that she's seen it and and it, and if she did even better that i could tell you right now sexy rev big sexy i'm sorry i apologize i was wrong to hold your feet to the fire and say you know i would never nah at the end of the day first of all i know you don't need me to crown you you know what i'm saying you don't need nothing from me and also it was just flat out wrong and i am sorry I still stand by I don't like the fact that, you know, the, the poison that she's fed to these girls. But I also got to accept the fact that, yeah, dog, Candace Owens has fed a lot of poison to a lot of people and made people look at black people in a very horrible light. So I wanted to be fair about it and just own up to my BS. I was wrong. Bottom line. And sometimes you got to own up to the BS. Sometimes when you make a mistake, you got to correct yourself. It's just bottom line. You got to correct yourself. That's the only way you could grow. That's the only way you could do better. And it's funny enough that that leads into the whole J. Cole apology. That leads into the whole J. Cole apology where essentially J. Cole apologized after the whole onslaught that he released. So if you don't know what happened, here's the, the, the uh, sequence of events. Kendrick Lamar on a surprise album by, F I don't think the album was a surprise. His feature was a surprise for Future and Metro Booming. He drops a bomb he just goes a i was gonna say a well he goes ham on cole and drake cole comes back about a week later or so with a surprise project called might delete later he drops might delete later and in it he has a major a couple of disses i i didn't honestly i didn't listen to the whole project and i, I probably should have but and i'll get to that in a second why i was mainly stuck on one record and it wasn't the seven minute drill record either that wasn't really like i, I was like all right yo he, he did his thing i guess i'm not a fan of all this toxic stuff that's going around but you know it is what it is he responded um but then shortly after j cole apologizes to kendrick lamar and says yo dog i was wrong you know what i'm saying like uh i it didn't make me feel good I, that's my dog and if you fire back i'm gonna take it on the chin and a lot of people are upset with the j cole situation 
And I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's crazy that people are mad at a black man for apologizing and saying, yo, I was wrong about firing off on the homie. Like, just take that in for a second, bro. Look at that real deeply. A black man can't even apologize to another black man without people trying to hang his feet to the flames and say, yeah, I can't listen to him the same anymore. Mind you, I got a little bit of insight from the big homie on the truth. Again, because I don't have all the facts, but from what I heard from the big homie, most people don't even realize what actually went down with that J. Cole situation. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, oh. Because from what I heard from the big homie, apparently J. Cole's quote-unquote diss to Kendrick Lamar wasn't even to Kendrick Lamar. In fact, to take it a step further, those quote-unquote disses were recorded a while back. Way before Kendrick Lamar dropped that verse. And you're like, whoa, what, what do you mean? Those, are, those clearly are disses. That he's going hardcore on whoever he's speaking about, and that's Kendrick Lamar because Kendrick Lamar just came out with a diss. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, from what I heard from the big homie, apparently those were bars that were going at Drake, your boy, before the duo project that they got with First Person Shooter and all that other stuff. From what I'm hearing, that was actually, those records were all disses towards Drake. And it just lined up. And I, I don't know all the facts of why Cole decided to release it that way and make people uh, believe that those were aimed towards Kendrick Lamar. Sorry. Um, but yeah, those weren't even, and I guess that also shows you just like how crazy things could really be behind the scenes. of And, and the general public would just rock with whatever. So essentially, those were originally bars towards Drake, and he made it seem as though it was towards Kendrick. Now, why would he do that? Again, we don't know behind the scenes. Like, I keep trying to tell y'all, for all we know, for all we know, these three are right now all sharing a drink and laughing at the world of how they just maneuvered this whole situation. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know. Things be wild. Things be crazy. But it's also insane and powerful how this was done. And going back to a point that I made of why I didn't really, like, I wasn't that big on the project. Not that it was a bad project. Might delete later. I'm going to be honest with you. My main sole focus on that project and my main enjoyment and hype has been on the record called Pi. If you haven't listened to Pi, I might delete later. Go listen to Pi. It's a record, P-I. And on the record is My Big Homie Daylight with Ab Soul, one of the greatest artists ever, and J. Cole. It's a J. Cole record, but it's featuring them too. And on this record, I'm not going to lie, I was just like, Wow. Because I've been waiting for a long time. My big homie, he, he moves the way he's going to move. You know, he's done so many different things. But I've been waiting for a long time to see my big homie shine. I wanted to see him shine. I wanted to see him really, you know what I'm saying? Because he is the greatest rapper, period. Hip-hop artist, period. Of all time. I will come one day and I will try and rock out right there. I'm not quite there yet. But he, in my eyes, is the greatest of all time, period. And all these years, I'm like, but damn, bro, why, why, why isn't my homie shining like the rest of them? And there's a lot of variables behind the scenes. It's nothing to do with like, he doesn't have talent or anything like that. It's almost because he's just too good. <laughs> like there's different levels to it. Like take, uh, to give you an idea, One Punch Man, for example, there's even up to S class, right? There's C to S class heroes. And then there's Saitama. And it's always been that he's like Saitama, that he's just so freaking good that the game just would be like, nah, bro, he's like a secret character that you got to unlock at some given point and we just won't let, you know what I'm saying? So to finally see him, and then on top of that, he's trading bars back to back with Absol, Herbert, bro. For me, I didn't care after that, like, yo, seven minute drill, cool, whatever else is on the project, Crocodile Tears, all that stuff. My homie is shining, and I've been waiting years, years to see this happen. 
So for me, at that point, that was the tape for me. On top of that, just if you listen to that, bro, again, Pi. Phenomenal. Incredible. Amazing. And it was just, it made me feel so good. Because I ain't gonna lie, that was a wild night for me. That was a wild night for me. I had a, a situation that night that was a little disappointing. And then, bam, my big homie just shows up with the godlike flow, godlike bars, just god hands shit bro i was so hyped and that was that was the winner for me the, the the winner of this whole thing right now like yo cool to everybody else and i'm not trying to downplay any of these artists kendrick none of them the winners of this one is daylight and of course absol because absol after his little break he hasn't been really like in the in the consciousness of the masses so to speak which is understandable you take a break i mean even when i return next week to using the tim anime channel for live streaming and stuff it might not have you know the reach that it once had and that's okay but to see that absol right now just gets one of the biggest looks getting put right next to j cole that was fire but my guy my big homie won i don't care like the the, the winner of kendrick versus drake versus cole is daylight okay <laughs> And I, I was just so excited for that. I'm feeling the love. I ain't gonna lie. I'm feeling plus ultra right now. You dig? Earlier, my daughter did something that I thought was so adorable. I just want to... Hold on. How did she do it? I think this is how Spider-Man sends love. Something like that. I, I can't really do it like how my daughter did it. But she said, Daddy, this is how Spider-Man sends love. So I just want to send love to everybody out there. If you need it. Whatever the case may be. Daylight needs to go back on Vlad. He was on Vlad like last year, I think. Um, it's just that he's not going to play those characters no more. And I'm sure that that's what Vlad would like. I'm sure Vlad would love for him to go back and be Bradley and all those other things. And I think that's way like daylight is done with the, the trolling era of daylight is done. Just like my trolling era. Like I had a little trolling era. That era is over. You know what I'm saying? So he's not. And I mean, I don't want to speak for him because you never know. He might decide, you know what? Bradley might, but I don't, I don't think so. Especially with the people that he's entrenched in now, his crew. He ain't going back on Vlad to do Bla uh, Bradley. He'll probably go back on Vlad if he does to do, yo, this is daylight. And let me tell you guys all these huge things that you'll never hear from anywhere else because he's just that dude. So um, he'll probably be back on Vlad at some given point. Um, but it's not going to be to troll, I don't think. I could be wrong. But that was also, that was a that was an era. That was an era of trolling. Remember, 6 9 was the troll dude at that time. You know what I'm saying? He was one of the biggest in hip-hop. Freaking, some people say Trump was a troll. And he was, you know what I'm saying? So it was the trolling era. So I hate when people try and downplay my guy. Like, he, he, he was doing that Bradley stuff, man. Shut up, yo. He was doing what he needed to do at the time, what he wanted to do at the time. And it, and it succeeded because it got a lot of people hip to, yo, wait a minute. So he's, he's spitting a lot of facts. And it's kind of funny. I need, I need to check this guy out. Like, I got, I got hip to the big homie. I wasn't hip to his music first. I got hip to his vlogs i got hip to his life lessons and stuff like that like that's how i got hip to the big homie and then i checked out music i'm like oh my god and then the rest is history you know what i'm saying now we now we here we got the god ass record with him might have something else on the way working on something else on the way and yeah i ain't gonna lie it's just for me I, the happiest thing was just seeing and that's the type of heart i got it's just people I care about, people that I really rock with to the fullest. To see them shine, to me, is like I'm shining. To see them get the love and praise that they deserve, is like I'm getting the love and praise that I deserve. So, Daylight is the winner of that whole thing. Now, from what I'm hearing, there's supposedly a record coming out from Drake tonight, and Kendrick might have something in the tuck. I'm hearing a lot of different things, but... It's just, it's amazing how, how all of this is playing out. And it's amazing, once again, that, wait a minute, so Black Man ap apologizes to Black Man and says, nah, that's not me. And his career is supposed to be over. It kind of reminds me of Chance the Rapper. I was never a big fan of Chance the Rapper. Didn't dislike him. I just, I never really got hip to him. But I remember I felt so disgusted with the world when he put out that one album where he was talking about how much he loves his wife. And pretty much they canceled him out of existence. And said he he talked about how much he loves his wife too much on this project. Get him out of here. And that was the end of Chance the Rapper. Like, I don't think he's dropped anything that people have has really gravitated towards since then. 
because he made a positive impact and said, I love my wife. So it, now a black man can't love his wife. <laughs> what are we doing here? Where are we going with this? What is this? Somebody said, now nah, that's just a terrible album. Ain't gonna lie, I'm at work watching this. Couldn't miss the stream. I appreciate you, Anime Zay. We have to stop condemning people over their past, especially if they have grown and matured. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's just, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the world be the way the world be. Sometimes, you know, I don't know. I guess just the way God moves, you know? And I'm gonna be honest with you because I was talking at length with my friend or my, my bro about uh, this whole Kendrick situation with, with Drake and, and Cole because it's interesting. The way I started listening to the three of them, I started with Drake like everybody else. You know, you hear him back in 09 with Best I Ever Had. And, you know, he always had a new hit every freaking other month or something. You know what I'm saying? So I started off with Drake. At some given point, I think the KOD project is where I really got into Cole where he was talking about kids on drugs and how impactful this is, you know, destroying our world. That right there was when I got with Cole. And then, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm lying. Not even that I'm lying. I just misremembered the order because I forgot. Before that, 2017, is just it was a toxic wave of a year for me um, in the midst of beautiful stuff that happened for me. Like, it was the year my daughter was born, but then I had so much of... I was getting attacked on all angles. So it was like, it was madness. It was chaos. And it was damn. So actually, I'm lying. It was Drake, Kendrick, and then Cole. Wow, I just remember that right now at this very moment. Interesting. So yeah, it was actually Kendrick with damn. And I'm not going to lie, bro. The journeys I went on listening to damn was indescribable. And I don't want to share any of those stories on this stream because they were some magnificently bad stories. But... You know, oh my, I'm willing to die for this shit. Take a lot for this shit. Go out for a die for this shit. Hey, I've been stomped out in front of my mama. My daddy's got, oh my God, bro. I I was rocking out with K-Dot. And that was also the first really big concert that I ever went to uh, with my sister. Well, in period, but I always remember it because I went with my sister. That was the only time we ever really did something like that. And we did it together. And uh, it was an amazing memory. And, you know, that's why for me, is hard because my favorite of the three, I'm going to just keep it real, is K-Dot. Dot is my favorite of the three, point blank. But I do like each of them for their own thing. Like, I like a lot of older Drake stuff. Even Scorpion, like God's plan. Come on, how can you hate on God's plan? That was, you know, God's plan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember turning up at a Funimation event to God's plan. Everybody was going lit, bro. We had God's will in the building. Shout out God's will wherever you at, homie. Um... But yeah, my favorite of the three is K-Dot, especially because of that Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers album. I've said this before, I'll say it again, that album helped me over the past two years to deal with so much that I've just been dealing with in my personal life. So I'm forever indebted to Dot, period, like point blank. But that KOD album, I was dealing with a lot of people that was dealing with addiction. And that album, I... I feel like it also helped me to battle or help with some of their battles. So that was also a, a, a powerful album. Drake has just always had that like, yo, dog, you need a good vibe. You want to feel a little bit like, you know what I'm saying? You want to feel tough for a second. There's a, a record in there uh, with mob ties or whatever. So Drake always has a little variety, but those two is just different. You know what I'm saying? Like if we compare them to the big three of anime, Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach, well, damn, I used to always say I had it mapped out. I don't know anymore if I would say that. Because, oh, yeah, that's a little too difficult to do anymore. Before, I used to have it clear. But now I don't know. Part of me just do doesn't want any of this to go down. Because it's like, yo, it's great for their careers and stuff like that. But I think one of the core elements of what Cole did that really is just beautiful is that it's showing young people in general, black, brown, white, whatever the case may be, bro, this is how you can do it. It doesn't have to end in violence. It doesn't have to end with being disrespectful. It doesn't have to end in toxicity. It can end in, yo, dog, my fault. <laughs> my bad. I, I goofed. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that that wasn't even that dot that was at Drake before anything just shows you how, how much of a good heart J. Cole has. You got to know that he wouldn't understand that hip-hop is going to and the world is going to call him out for apologizing because the world is filled with such toxicity so for him to take this whole thing on him bro that that's godly stuff 
Who would, how many people right now, be honest with me, how many people will walk through the fire like that knowing the entire world is going to take a massive dump on you because of, you know what I'm saying, something that's not even the reality. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't really dissing Dot. He was dissing Drake and it was way before they even had the collab album. Bro, that's some code geass. You know, a Lelouch type of stuff, bro. Uniting the world. Yeah, uh, Chance's wife divorced him, but who knows if that's even legit. <laughs> Just being honest. If everybody hated him for loving his wife, the natural thing would be to put out a press release. Yo, my wife left me. Oh, everybody loves me again because I'm heartbroken. That's wild. Chance got divorced. His wife's music terrible. That's why people stopped caring about him. Not because he loved his wife. Chance is also hella corny. I feel like J. Cole has always been about peace and unity. I don't know why people are surprised he would apologize. Because people... There's so many, there's so much demonic energy out there that people are entrenched in. People think that like, nah, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? People don't want to see positivity. We, we're living in a crazy, crazy time. Realistically, the way the public is, all it takes is a couple of moves and people will forget all about it. Realistically, all it takes is for a few things to happen and oh, forget about the corny quote unquote thing he did. We love him again. All it takes is for the fall off to have one fire record on there that people can't deny. And, oh, everybody, who cares about that? He's a great artist. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like J. Cole's ever been a gangster rapper. Has J. Cole ever been like, like, okay, if 50 Cent came out and apologized to Ja Rule, I could see people really understandably looking at him like, well, not even now, because it's been so long. Yeah, apologize. Who cares? But especially in the, or, or shall I say, in the heat of the situation, yeah, that would have been crazy because 50 Cent is, you know, one of the biggest gangster rappers of all time. It's J. Cole, dog. This is the dude that was rapping about college. What what, what did you want from him? Let's not forget that Dot is from Compton. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, what do, you, what do you want? But again, it wasn't even about Dot. It was about Drake. I don't think any of them really care either. He sacrificed his fans for his friendship with Kendrick. It's his decision. Facts. 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 What you sipping on, fam? I'm sipping on Plus Ultra. You dig? It's the it's the the liquid that is gonna get me through this. You feel me? Dot is like five five. Drake will whoop that ass so bad. It's not funny. No, I, I never said nothing about hand to hand combat. Although, hold up, Dot could be five five. But let's not forget why they call him Kung Fu Kenny. You know what I'm saying? Let's not forget they call him Kung Fu Kenny for a reason. Let's talk about uh, Naruto stuff. For starters, there's big announcement supposedly. Big announcement that they've been teasing that Naruto's about to have a big announcement is that Masashi Kishimoto and Ikamoto, the Masashi Kishimoto, the original creator of Naruto and Ikamoto, artist of Boruto, will be in France for a, a big event. So what does that mean for us? Because like, yo, we ain't in France, who cares? That means that we're going to be able to get their words whenever they get it gets translated which usually is in an hour of them talking and it being publicized so we will hear what they have to say mind you we haven't heard from Masashi kishimoto in possibly five years in terms of like on a major scale like we get little comments here and there and him yes naruto changed the world but considering this seems as though it's going to be boruto related and he hasn't really said a peep about boruto in a long time other than you know the big event where he posted the Minato stuff but that wasn't really Boruto related so that's something I guess major that Masashi Kishimoto will be speaking for the first time in a while but then apparently there was an official post of Naruto post that created Masashi Kishimoto doesn't post on social media so apparently they had to clarify because there was parody quote-unquote accounts or or false accounts that was popping up of pretending to be Masashi Kishimoto uh, so they had to come out with official statements like, yo, that's not Kishimoto. He doesn't do that. He's not on social media, which I don't believe that. I don't believe that he's not on social I believe that he's not. How can you say this? I believe that he's not with an official account, but I'm sure occasionally he checks social media. I'm sure. And if he doesn't, great to him, to be honest with you. Like at some given point, I myself will be off social media. I don't know when it will be, but I know 100% that's one of the end goals getting off social media 
Like, I'm sorry, bro. You know, that day comes. I, that's why you got to stay connected to me now. Because at some given point, I am getting off of social media. There's a lot of other things that I prefer to be doing um, in terms of not necessarily this stuff because this is kind of cool, I guess. But just all the other stuff. Like, y'all already see, I don't even really post a majority of my platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is one of the only things that I'm consistently about to start doing again. But other than that, you ain't getting much of me elsewhere because, like, yo, social media is a toxic it's a toxic place. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, the, the benefit is that I get to connect with you guys, the people that really rock with me. You know what I'm saying? Negativity just outweighs it, though, by by margins. You know what I'm saying? So at some given point, I will be getting off of this bad boy. Yo, what's good? Small Bento Sakura. Kung Fu Kenny is Don Cheeto. I'm done with you. <laughs> I'm done with you, dog. So, yeah, that's pretty much the Naruto related news. Uh, You know me. I love me some Naruto stuff, so I do like to talk about it. Uh, But, yeah, essentially Naruto... Um what you call it massage Kishi is really not even naruto related it's more so massage kishimoto related news that he will be saying something with ikamoto this year in france uh and he doesn't post on social media and i got the articles here i guess we could quickly read social media has changed how we interact with people by allowing us unparalleled access to celebrities blah 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 uh both the official japanese and english Twitter accounts for Naruto stated on April 8th, Kishimoto does not post on any social media services. The statement comes about three and a half years after one parody account appeared claiming to be owned by Kishimoto. Yeah, I mean, I could have told you that. I could have told you that. Uh, I wanted to talk about the My Hero Academia second teaser trailer thingy majig and to give you a brief synopsis toho animation began streaming a second teaser video from my hero academia the movie the fourth anime film in my hero academia's franchise the video previews the villain character dark might who looks like all might and is also voiced by kenta miyake the film will open on august 2nd tensai ok okamura is directing the film at bones returning staff member yeah it's bones the poster looks fire that's very short trailer it seems like the selling point is like, oh, we got Evil All Might. What's going on here? Um, it, it sounds like it's going to be hype. It looks hype. Uh, and honestly, you know, I was going to say, I wonder how that's going to impact the TV anime schedule. But realistically, I don't even care about the TV anime like that anymore. Like the TV anime, from where we're at right now, content-wise, there's nothing that's really like, oh my god, this is so good. Uh, minus the Star and Stripes stuff that's about to happen. Shout out to Star and Stripes. Other than that, I don't really, I'm not all that enthusiastic or all that excited about uh, the, the TV anime of My Hero all like that anymore. Like, I'm going to watch some of it, and I'm sure I'll enjoy some of it, but I'm more excited for this movie. And them having Dark All Might in there, I'm just curious how y'all going to play it out. Like, is it going to be that All Might himself went rogue? Did we time travel? Is it an alternate reality? What is going on here? So a few questions there, but overall, art and animation look decent. The, art, the animation doesn't look crazy, but My Hero Academia never really is like, you know, you leave that category for Demon Slayer, Studio Ufotable. But it, it looks high. It looks decent. His evil brother? Okay, his evil brother. We've never heard about him having a brother. I mean, I guess they could they could just pull it out like, yes, he had a brother, but that just reminds me of like Korra, that, that Amon reveal that was kind of like, so it was a brother that we never knew about all along. I mean, I, I guess, it's not like he's a masked man or anything like that, but still, I don't know. I don't know. It gotta be a clone. Interesting. A clone. Okay. I can see it. I recently saw a dope movie. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it, and it's a little out of the wheelhouse of the stuff I've talked about recently, but I saw a movie on Netflix called Suzume. I think it's called Suzume. Uh, and it's a very, very interesting movie. Very interesting movie. If you haven't seen Suzume, essentially, to give you a brief synopsis, uh, there's a girl, and one day she comes across this guy, and the guy is on his way to open up, or he's trying to find the door, and he's asking her directions to find the door, and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's that way, that way. He's like, all right, bless, later. Uh, she gets curious though and goes off to find him. I don't know if, what what was her deal when I can't remember at this point, but she gets a little curious and goes after him and she notices him and I might be misremembering the chain of events at this point. I saw it with my daughter. We had a blast. Um, but essentially he's trying to close this door and she's like, yo, what's going on here? Because like all this energy is coming out of the door and, um, 
essentially there's a cat that shows up. A cat just shows up out of nowhere. A little white cat. And the cat shows up and the cat essentially turns the guy into a chair. So the guy gets turned into a chair and pretty much it's their mission at that point to go. They got to find because that cat is a key. The cat is essentially a key to stopping all of this and closing all these doors. So together, the guy that is now turned into a chair. Look, I'm a chair. I've been in this chair so long. I'm a chair. Hey, right? But they got to work together. Yeah, he gets turned into a chair. It's, it's, it's weird. Uh, together, they, they, they're searching for this cat uh, so that they can stop all these wormholes from opening up and close all these doors using these keys. And eventually, after a certain point, they go through a lot of adventures her aunt i think it was her aunt i want to say it was her aunt that she that she lived under forgive me if i'm off on that but um essentially her aunt is looking for her because she's like yo what are you doing what's going on are you with some dude what's happening here um but she i think she started growing feelings for dude or something i don't really remember but um she started pretty much they they finally get to one of the final things and in order to stop the this one door in particular he sacrifices himself to a certain degree. He's like, yo, dog, I, I got to do this. And she's like, wait a minute. So he's gone? Like, where is he? And I guess he gets sent to this place called the Ever After. She wants to see him again. She She's like, man, I want to see, you know, he's in this place called the Ever After. Um, But she can't get to him. So one thing leads to another. I don't want to spoil the whole thing. But honestly, you should go see it. I, I highly encourage you. I think it it will change your world. <laughs> it's up to you, though, if you want to check it out. But, uh, yeah, it's called Suzume on Netflix. It's an, They got an English dub for it. So if you don't like watching Japanese anime, feel free. If you want to watch it in Japanese, they got that, too. Um, good movie. And funny enough, I ain't going to lie. I was, I was a little bit like, yo, this just aligns so beautifully for me. Uh because lately there's been a neighborhood cat that just showed up. A little beautiful little baby cat. And I ain't gonna lie, I've been rocking out with that cat. And I was like, yo, it must be fate. It must be destiny. Um, yeah, that's always how it is. Every time you, you try and watch something, your, your family is gonna walk in and it's gonna be like the most gratuitous thing that has nothing to do. But that five seconds is what they're gonna see and they're gonna judge the crap out of you. My dog is barking. When my dog barks, I usually try and just sit back for a second so I don't interrupt the broadcast. Bottom line of anything is you got to be yourself. You got to be who you are and never let anything else. How can I say this? I don't know. I feel like I'm not explaining it right the way I want to explain it. I don't know. The, uh, to quote uh, the quote or to quote the hook from God asked, why don't you find out yourself who you are? Follow God. God will explain it to you who you are, I guess. Or he'll show you who you are. He ain't going to explain it. You're going to see who you are, I guess. No matter how old I am, I always look and pretend like I am always a holy mother. <laughs> I live in Toronto and you live in NYC, right? I am an atheist. Why are you an atheist, my friend? Has God not shown you that he is real? Like God, God is very beautiful and merciful. God will, you know, he, he shows love, I guess, to a certain degree. And even then, I'm not explaining things right. Yeah, I guess the, the plus ultra juice tonight is really rocking me out. I'm not really explaining things the way they need to be explained. You researched and no evidence? Shout out to D. Wildo subscribing for four months with Prime. The God in Old Testament wants animal sacrifices committed genocide. Okay, let me explain it to you. Let me take off the filtered version for a split second and explain something about God to you. God is basically like a scientist that wants to see what's going to happen. If I put this here and I put this here... Let's see what happens. That is the truth. <laughs> I know that might rock some people's world, but taking the filter just for a split second aside, that is the reality. Or so it seems. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just some uh, aspiring musician that talks about anime occasionally. Yeah, super appreciate the Wildos again. And I say all that to say too because like, you know, God will do something fire for you, 
something great. You know, he'll bless your life. But also when you do things that are you're not supposed to be doing, when you do things that is out of alignment of who you are supposed to be, that's when God is going to come and show you what's up. When you're not who you are supposed to be, when you're not aligned to his will, their will, her will, whatever God is, that's when he'll, that's when they'll show you, you know, that's when God will show you what's what. So just a small piece of advice. Astro Eros, yes, I am a bit familiar with quite a bit as well. I've learned a lot about uh, a few different of the quote unquote, you know, religions, so to speak or whatnot. The way I move, I make sure I move correctly as much as I can because that scientist, he be on some stuff, you know what I'm saying? That scientist be on some, whatever God may be, that dude, he's a wild one, bro. Just think about it for a second. I learned this from one of the big homies, but that I, you know, you look into it and you see like, oh, hold up. So, Lucifer, the devil, works for God? And they're BFFs, essentially. And God is like that dude that like, yo, dog, do me this one solid, bro. <laughs> I'm totally trying to explain it the way my homie explains it. But Lucifer, essentially, is an extension of God. And people look at it like because of the way they've been taught that, oh, yo, like Lucifer is just literally doing what he's sent to do. So essentially, it's all, again, God's plan and God's will. God killed a lot more people in Bible than Satan. No, no, no. Let's not start attacking uh, Christianity. Religion itself, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff in all you could find. Um, but at the end of the day, that's why you follow God. You follow your purpose. You walk your path, the, the, the path you're supposed to walk, who you're supposed to be. And life could be beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You just got to follow follow what God set out for you. You can see the signs. The signs are there. Religion isn't perfect. There's always misunderstandings with all religions. Of course. I mean, that's one of the beautiful things. Like me, I like to surround myself with multifaceted people. Like my brother Hazem is Muslim. I got people that are Christians. I'm a, I'm a Christian, I guess you would say. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I mean, I'm not uh, tied to one sector. But I'm a Christian, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, I see we blame God for the actions of men and women. I don't know, pressure, Matt. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's up to you what you want to feel, what you want to believe. But I can assure you that God is real. And God will show you uh, the lessons that need to be shown in order for you to, you know, are you going to follow the path you're supposed to walk? Are you going to fall into, I don't know what to say, depravity, whatever the case may be? I used to be Christian back when I was younger, but now I just vibe and do good. Facts. Do, being a good person, you know what I'm saying? As long as you understand, being a good person. I mean, personally, me, I need God. I need the most high. I need the most high in my life. I love the most high. The most high is one of the coolest homies I've ever had in my life. Shout out to the big homie, the most high. Love you, homie. Like, see, that's how I talk to God. I'm going to be honest with you. I talk to God like, because a lot of people, they talk to God in a different way. You know, maybe you'd be like, oh, father, you know, whatever the case may be. Me, I talk to God like he's just one of, the, you know, he's the big homie at the end of the day. Yo, God, what's good, homie? How you doing, dog? <laughs> what's up? That's just how I do it. Because I feel like, aren't we all supposed to be, we're supposed to get closer to God, right? That's the whole objective to get as close as you can to God. So why would I put up a facade of something that I am not? Something that I will never be. Dead zombie. No serious intellectual things. God exists. Oh, God exists. The most high exists. Herb in the air to get closer to the most high. If I ever feel down, I get on my knees and pray to Mr. G. OG Panda Turtle. Turtle. Hello, have you been doing good? I enjoyed your news episode. It was awesome. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I need to get back to the news. I started talking about 
the the most high and i just lost train of, train of thought we lost track of this shit okay let's talk about this real quick guinness world record names jujutsu kaisen most in-demand animated tv show the Guinness World Record has certified Jujutsu Kaisen as the most in-demand animated TV show, calling it the world's most popular anime. The series overtakes Attack on Titan, which held the record since 2020. And I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Let me see what metrics they're using. According to the data, Jujutsu Kaisen has a global demand rating that was 71.2 times greater than that of the average TV show. Power Analytics calculated calculates demand based on billions of captured data points such as video consumption social media engagement and research actions actions that require more effort for consumers such as watching or downloading a show are weighed more heavily according to the company one piece and previous record holder attack on titan were close and i'm gonna be honest i don't believe this at all i don't know what is their reasoning behind whatever you know why are they uh, approaching it in this manner i don't believe that at all like Attack on Titan was an anomaly like I've never seen before. 70 year old white people was coming up to me. I love that Attack on Titan, young man. I just love it. Like, bro, I've seen all walks and shapes talking about Attack on Titan. You're not going to tell me that Jujutsu Kaisen, as much as I love Jujutsu Kaisen, I think they're absolutely overhyping it. I'm going to be honest with you. And shout out to my brother Max Powers because he loves Jujutsu Kaisen. Never personal towards him, never intentional towards him. Um, it's just. The reality, bro. Attack on Titan is way more popular. Naruto is way more popular than Jujutsu Kaisen, period. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just the reality of it. And popularity, who cares about popularity at the end of the day? But let's just be honest with you. Let's be honest here. Jujutsu Kaisen is not more popular than Attack on Titan. Come on now. Come on. Come on. And that's the fact that Max submitted that record. <laughs> Max owns Anime News Network. <laughs> God bless my brother Max Powers. I love him so much, bro. Shout out to my brother Max Powers. But no, Attack on Titan is the big the big dog. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget. I was in Tennessee. This is 2015, I want to say. I had just got engaged. You know, life was wilding out. And I remember I was like in a diner somewhere. And this is 2015. So Attack on Titan at this point is like season one is like three years old, I think. This is before season two even comes out. And I'm meeting people, like, because I think I had, like, an Attack on Titan book bag or something. And I'm meeting all sorts of walks of life telling me about Attack on Titan. Jujutsu Kaisen fans most of the time don't even understand what the hell is going on. <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen fans be lost in the source. You know what I'm saying? So how the hell do you, how are you going to try and convince me that Jujutsu Kaisen is more popular than Attack on Titan that took the world by storm? When that opening came out, do you know how many parodies came out? I think they 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 planting snakes in the garden, so to speak, to get us. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes if you want to get through, you want to cut through, you just got to pluck the weeds out. That makes me think of a song by my big homie. Shout out Daylight. Makes me think of a song that he had called Addicted to Sober. And I know we're just trailing off, but sometimes I like to do this with these things. The new for never news, baby. It makes me think of a song that is so powerful. It's called Addicted to Sober. And I love that song because essentially it's something that can be therapeutic to help people. Whatever addiction you're dealing with, whatever the case may be. Because from the biggest to smallest, anything can be an addiction. Coffee can be an addiction. Caffeine, an addiction. I've seen... Weed. I've seen weed take people down. Weed. You would just think, yo, it's just weed. I've seen weed take people that I love down. Destroyed. The people saying that weren't old enough to see the hype around Attack on Titan when it first blew up. Shout out to Golf. Golf Maps. Weed is way too strong nowadays. Weed is an addictive substance regardless of what anyone says. 110% weed. I remember there was a homie. I remember the homie was doing his thing. Remember the homie was, you know, on his way. And I remember he got introduced to weed. I remember he just he just started with the weed. And if it wasn't for circumstances that ultimately came and, and saved him, this weed would have taken him down badly. Because I saw it all. I saw, I saw it all. 
every last drop of it i saw it all and it's just it's, it's it breaks my heart it breaks my heart that something as simple as weed can destroy somebody i don't know sorry if i'm getting a little little emotional i finished attack on titan a, a while ago the anime and manga well the anime just recently wrapped up and it was it was it was wild the way it, it ended i can't rock with weed i don't know it's just not me uh let's see we is weed in canada it's okay also if you're smoking weed it's bad for you edibles can be very beneficial though i don't know pressure matt honestly pressure matt I'm going to be honest, weed, just not it, man. I don't know. No, I do know. It's not it. Oh, my God, D. Wildo sent in the donation. You ain't sent me a number, bro. You ain't sent me a number, so I couldn't uh, hit you back, dog. But I appreciate it regardless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody that sent in, uh, what you call it, that sent in uh, donations to the collection plate. Send a small donation on Cash App. Right there, uh, dollar sign for Nev, with your phone number. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Don't feel bad. I've said it already a couple of different times. My big homie, I, I almost, yo, I was in tears. I was out of breath to talk to my big homie. And I ain't embarrassed or ashamed of it. Because like my brother Hazem and me both say, Love gonna win in the end. And love gonna win in the end. In the end, in the end, in the end. But you miss anime, Zay? Not much, just saying um, how much weed can take somebody down. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry I'm laughing. I laugh, honestly, to stop myself from crying because drugs really destroy people. I've, I've lost so many people I love and care about to drugs. And it really pains me. And some people, they, they fall victim to it. They fall victim to addictions. <sighs> From a lot of different reasons. Obviously, you could fall victim to it over something bad happening. It could be heartbreak. I remember one time. <sighs> God, I don't want to talk about this one. <sighs> I remember one time. I had actually developed a little bit of a, I don't want to say a, a habit, but okay, you know what? Let me just, I had a little bit of a drinking problem a few years back. And mind you, I'm, I'm zipping on some Plus Ultra. This is literally quick once a week having a little juice while I talk to the people. But I remember I was dating this girl years back and things didn't go right at all. It, it really broke my heart. I was destroyed. I was messed up. All of that jazz, right? And so I started hitting up this bar almost every day. It was just consistent. And I remember just, how can I say this? It was a lot of that heartbreak that, really was what was driving me to it and i remember some of the homies would be around and they would try their best to get me through this and all that stuff you know they would they would always at the end of the day just keep it real like you know you, you get mad at people that love you and care about you for keeping it real but sometimes you got to keep it real people do do drugs to escape reality but there's nothing that you're escaping Um, and I remember like one of the homies, uh, I forget what song it, he would play, but he would play a few different records to make me feel better. And it just always put a smile on my face. Like, you know, be at the bar and some jam would come on. I don't fucking know. So like Caroline, she's the reason for the word. Just playing, even though. And I was just like, well, you know, made me feel better. So shout out to the shout out to the homies that was there for me during that painful experience. Crash into a ditch. 
Even though just playing <laughs> to divide by the time it takes to look inside and realize that real guys go for real down to Mars girls. Yeah. I'm wearing this around my neck, by the way. I was going to wrap it around my head on some like I was going to do something fly, but it just wasn't coming out the way I wanted it. So I just put it around me like that. I don't know. I want more Invincible after se watching season two. And yeah, I started Invincible the other day. I started watching episode, I don't know, the first season of the late, or the first episode of the latest season. And I'm going to be honest with you. There was just a little bit of, <sighs> I was watching it. And I know, don't make fun of me. Please don't make fun of me. Because y'all know I watched some wild stuff. I watched some Berserk back in the day. But I don't know, maybe it's just having a kid and some of the things that I've been through in my life has kind of changed me a little bit that I'm watching Invincible and there's blood everywhere. And I'm just like, ooh, I don't know if I can take this. I don't know if I can take this. I was just like, there's too much blood. So I was like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes into the episode. And I just put it on pause and I left it there. I just put it on pause and left it there. Um, it's just like, ah, it's something I gotta get over though. Because again, this is a guy that has watched Berserk. You know, I've seen the eclipse. Griffith! You know what I'm saying? I've seen it all. So, to come to the point where I'm at now, again, don't make fun of me, but I don't know. I just, I need to get over it. Okay, I need to get over it. I want more Invincible. I saw that. That's some real friends right there. Yeah, that's genuine. There are people that will see you struggle and will ghost you till you're doing well again. Yeah. Um, sometimes that's just though that God has something to show you. Sometimes God got to show you at the end of the day something and maybe he uses those people as instruments to show you something. Again, what do I know though? Hey, you back for never? You went ghost, man. Hope all is well. I am back. I am Gucci. We are having a blast. I'm not going to lie. I am loving being back to Forever News. At first, I ain't going to lie. I was dreading it. Like I was telling one of the homies a while back, like, yo, dog, I'm done with this anime stuff. I don't care no more. Um, and between my incredible God tier, just amazing manager, Mr. Light, and then homie that I was talking to from YouTube, it just kind of put everything into perspective. Like, because one day I am going to be, like, I'm going to be that guy. And I'm not talking about that guy from the meme. I'm talking about, like, you're going to see Tim. I'm going to shine the same way that my big homie shine. Like, yo, if my big homie is, like, I don't know, just for the sake of argument, if my big homie Daylight is the Naruto of this situation, one day... Konohamaru, which is me in this scenario, will shine. I may have taken a lot of L's in between situations, you know what I'm saying? From from Shippuden to Boruto, Konohamaru, you know what I'm saying? He took quite a few L's, such as myself. But one day, the same way that my big homie is shining right now, I'm going to be shining. The same way that my big homie overcame so many things that most of y'all could never even fathom, I'm going to be right there, bro, because God is good. And to quote my big homie, God promised the world that I'ma shine. Bless me for life. Let there be light. See, y'all ain't see Tim's hard grind. And y'all ain't give Tim y'all time. See, we was winning through the dark time. From the beginning, it was our shine. But God said, let there be light. Let there be light. Who? let there be light. Let there be light. Shout out to my big homie for the one time. I don't care how anybody feels about me. Constantly shouting him out. I'm so proud of him. I'm so happy for him. I'm so grateful that I've actually gotten to, you know, experience his rise. Just like y'all experiencing my rise right now. The rise of Tim Roosevelt. I got to experience my big homie's rise and he's just going to continue to rise. A room full of mirrors. Shout out to each and every one of them. Shout out to Ichiban Don. Shout out to Punch. Lyric Michelle, Early Riser, Juice, Nico, Deshaun, Boss, 
did I say everyone? I hope I said everyone. If I didn't, forgive me. Like the the plus ultras is is kicking in right now. But shout out to them. They're just incredible. But again, my big homie is shining, and I'm happy about it because he deserves it because he's incredible. I'm glad, bro. See, glad spirit is up and doing well. Yeah, bro. I'm fighting through everything, regardless, bro. Like I've been through some stuff over the last few years that is just like wow. And I still, at the end of the day, I keep. How can you say this? I want to say I keep moving forward, but something that I learned is sometimes you got to take two steps back. Sometimes you got to take two steps back in order to win because literally the finish line is two steps back. So if you want to win, take a couple steps back. Do you think doing these type of streams once a week might be easier to get into than the old way you used to make videos? 110%. Um... I don't think I'll ever, I don't want to say I don't think because then all of a sudden Mr. Light will be like, hey. <laughs> but uh, I don't see myself ever doing those. I'm never going to put myself stuck in the grind again. Unless it was something that there was a purpose to it. Unless I, it was to help somebody, help people. Because even to a certain degree, these streams. I do it to help people. I wish to see you shine. It's your time. I'll be here to support you. I love you, small bento Sakura. Come give me a virtual hug. I love you. <laughs> You're so freaking awesome. I love you. Shout out to small bento Sakura. Damn, Tim, don't let me. Come, stop it, Jay Garcia. You've been ride or die for a hot minute. Don't. G come give me a hug too, Jay. C come give me a hug. Pause on that, by the way. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Do I got anything else? Oh, snap. Okay. One thing that I did, because I know some of the homies would appreciate this. I know there's people that actually appreciate this. Uh, okay, so the top 50 best-selling manga of the week. So 50 through 41. I'll give you guys a very brief rundown. Uh, Beyond Journey's End, Volume 1, Volume 11, and Volume 12 are in places 48, 47, 46 with 11 point something K sold, meaning that Beyond Journey's End is still having a boom. I watched a good handful of Beyond Journey's End and I really liked what I saw. I thought it was really dope. I don't know, I just got, I gotta get back into it. Like I said, I've been off of anime. But like, so the So So No Free Aaron uh, explosion is still going. Aside from that, I don't know none of these series, so we're not even gonna, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I know, as a matter of fact, if you're watching Forever News right now uh, on the, how can I say, the video on demand, I'm sorry, streamers. Just give me a second. Video on demand, watchers. If you, uh, what you might call it, train of thought, train of thought, train of thought. If you want me to put the full thing on the screen or whatever, let me know. Either way, okay. Places 40 through 31. We got Beyond Journeys and yet again places 38, 37, 36, 35 with 13,000, about 13.5 a piece, more or less. So Beyond Journeys and seems to be still exploding. Places 30 through 21. Tomodachi no ni chan ni koishita hanashi. What the hell is that? Pink Heart Jam Beat. Okay. Oh, okay. We got we got a recognizable one. One Punch Man Volume 30. In 28 days, 14.7K. Uh, or in 28 days, 239,000. Yo, I'm so rusty at this. And this week it did 14.7K. So One Punch Man is still popping. Shout out to One Punch Man. Shout out to Saitama. <laughs> uh, places 20 through 11. Let's see, at number 19, solo leveling. In nine days, it did 38. Yo, why are they putting solo leveling on here? I mean, I guess because they're releasing it in Japan. But, bro, it's not It's not Japanese. It's it's manhwa. It's Korean. Just, I don't know. Solo leveling, volume 16, nine days, it did 38.5, 20K this week. Let's see here. Uh, we ain't talking about rabbits. <laughs> rabbits, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Just real quickly, because there's a manga right here called Is the Order a Rabbit, Volume 12. And it just makes me think of Easter real quick. And at the end of the day, like, it's kind of wild that, you know, it's supposed to be about Jesus's, what is it, about his his resurrection, right? I want to say, hold on. I might be mixing it up. That plus ultra juice is hitting me. Hold on. Easter Jesus. What is Easter and Jesus? The resurrection. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Just, just wanted to double check. So why are we putting a rabbit that don't lay eggs with colorful eggs in front of the holiday of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Just take a second to think about that for a second. Why would they put a rabbit 
with eggs on the day that Christ was resurrected. Why do that? Follow the rabbit hole. Then again, don't because we off that conspiracy. Th well, is it a conspiracy? I don't know. Food for thought, I guess, right? Dig in. Pause. Kinukuman volume 84. Three days. 29.9. Kinukuman is that wrestling thing that Hulk Hogan loves. <laughs> and we got top 10, top 10, top 10, top 10. Top 10 manga. We got Record of Ragnarok, Volume 21, 13 days, 131K. Uh, shout out Record of Ragnarok. I still stand on I like the anime. Regardless of how many people shitted on it, I like the regular Ragnarok anime. And number six, Blue Lock, Volume 28. Uh, 17 days. 230 i can't wait for blue lock season two that is when i will be tapping in it is doing it's number six with his latest volume and in 17 day in 17 days still number six and it did in total 238k so far that'll be top 10 selling manga of the year i bet if not i'll be shocked uh, we got the big piece one piece you know oda saying Fuck the big three it's just big me volume 108 in 28 days 1.29k 1,290,000 uh, copies. You already know it's One Piece. We out here. Uh, Spy Family, volume 13, at number 3. In 28 days, 827K. Can't stop the Spy Family, fam. We out here. And then number 1 and 2 is a manga. I feel like, yeah, I've talked about it a million times. Like, what is this? Hitori Goto, or it's Kusuriya no Hitori Goto. The limited edition did... 100k almost 99k and the regular volume to 246k so in total this manga in a full week has done 340 350k 350,000 what is this wow uh all right i'm going to uh call it quits um but shout out to each and every person starting next week uh I will be doing duo streams, meaning that my attention will be divided. I will not be only on Twitch. I will be back and forth between YouTube and Twitch. Um, and I still want to give you guys one final opportunity, I guess you'd say, in between now and then for all of my people that really rock with me. Uh, if you want to uh, stay tapped in, small donation. Come on. Big Tim ain't asking for too much. Just hit the collection plate. It could be a dollar. I ain't asking for much. Just help me get a little bit more of that plus ultra juice. And send me a phone number and we can link. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel embarrassed. I was once one of you guys. One of my homies. One of the people that I, I really rock with so much and got so much love for. I, I, I got mad love for homie. I was in the same situation. And I rose to the occasion and we up. So feel free if you want in between now and then, create a cash app, send me a dollar, send me a number. Uh, we can connect like that. But other than that, thank you so much. East Coast dudes always saying, be saying pause. I, I swear, just real quickly, I do not feel like I'm an East Coast dude. Like I think some people get the... And, and maybe I'm off on assuming their assumptions. But I feel like some people think that I'm really like hardcore on the New York stuff. The only time I really ever let out like my New York accent is like when I want to be funny when I'm ordering coffee. Like that's literally one of the only times that you hear when I be like, I'll be like, yeah, let me get a, a coffee with two cream, four sweet and low. Like other than that, I'm really like, bro, I, I grew up on mad different place. Okay, I'm saying mad and that's a New York slang. Shut up, Tim. <laughs> Deuces, Tim. <laughs> Uh, Tim dropped a new album, working on it, working on it, working on it. I'm working on Love Wins with my bro Hazem El Komi, Big H. Shout out to Big H, nothing but love for him. So we're going to be, we'll be dropping that soon. I got a couple of records. I got a, a, a record with him. We're going to do probably a remix to his record, Let Go. And, uh, and we got another record uh, that we're probably going to drop after that. But we got a whole project. Like I've been music century you dig we've been mad musicked up um again thank you so much everybody that showed up super appreciate y'all shout out to for the one time again a room full of mirrors daylight ichiban don lyric michelle punch early riser juice negro deshaun they're awesome uh i'm gonna leave y'all with this because i feel like maybe there might be somebody out there that's dealing with something that is hard to come to grips with 
And maybe if I could help in any way possible, so be it. Because sometimes, like my brother Hazem's record, Let You Go, I'm going to play my record called Let Go off my album, The Rise of Tim Roosevelt, on all streaming platforms. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Believe it. My heart's broke, but it's time to move on. Even though it hurts, I must let it go. And I can't let you know. But now it's time to grow. My heart's broke, but it's time to move on. Even though it hurts, I must let it go. But now it's time to grow Never thought I'd have to spend my life without you It was hard every lonely night Sitting here without you It was hard with these pictures Just the scars of my interest I don't fault you Forget this, this was all just to mention But I can't seem to be every day with you What it meant to me Sorry for leaving you Never was deemed for me Maybe a dream to see Maybe you'll see it breathe Stop what you feel is inside you love. Never forget it's okay we will find it Never forget but it's time to move on A Day at a time you'll be fine it's alright You cannot stop what you feel is inside you love. Never forget it's okay we will find it Never forget but it's time to move on My love My heart's broke but it's time to move on Even though it hurts I must let it go And I can't let you know but now it's time to grow My heart's broke but it's time to move on Even though it hurts I must let it go And I can't let you know But now it's time to grow Thank you so much, thank you so much for joining another episode of... For Never News! God bless everybody, and yeah, look out once again for more music from Tim. We out here. Peace. Peace in. Hold on. The real peace sign. Hold on, hold on. Peace in.